First of all, everyone's saying that, you know, you're going to run for governor in 2010. What are you going to do? Well, you know, I, I, I love public service, and, and the idea of having an opportunity to run again is very exciting. Uh, it's a little early uh, yet, and I've said that, that I will make that decision after the November election cycle completes itself. But listen, we need somebody to talk about jobs in the state of Connecticut and the economy and the cost of energy and education uh, and the transportation system. And I certainly learned a, a lot of things traveling the state the last time I ran for governor, met great people, traveled mm -hmm. throughout the state. Uh, it would be a high honor and a privilege to run for governor again. But you haven't made a final decision. Well, I'm certainly not announcing anything here, if that's what you're trying <laughs> this to This is the place to do yeah, it, by well, the way. Well, then you're going to have to have me back, <laughs> maybe. All right. Uh, do you have a time frame for announcing? Well, I, I think that, that, you know, this thing will settle out pretty quickly. We're, we're, I, I love uh, Obama. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure uh, that he's elected president. Um, w there are lots of things to do in the state of Connecticut in this election cycle, and the legislative cycle. I think things are going to move very, very rapidly mm -hmm. uh, once the November election um, is over. And I think ultimately Democrats are going to look for somebody who really mm -hmm. Uh, has a track record uh, when it comes to the economy. You know, I've been mayor uh, in the city of Stanford for 13 years, and the, and the city of Stanford's done pretty well during that 13-year uh, uh, period of time. For instance, uh, uh, the mill rate, our tax rate uh, on property is half of what it was when I became mayor. We have more jobs than when I became mayor. The educational system is doing better uh, than when I became mayor. We're doing things on transportation that nobody else in the state is doing. I'd love to have the opportunity to bring some of that to Connecticut. All across the state, the roll call, of course, the longtime national stall where it says it's it's really between you and Richard Blumenthal and uh, they refer to Speaker Amon as a as a lower tier candidate. Do you see it as a race between you and the Attorney General should he decide to run? Well you know it's amazing how things change because the last time I was I, I ran and as you know I won the convention convention that mm -hmm. exciting day by one vote I was the lower uh, tier so anything can happen in, in these contexts. Dick's a friend I think it's very uh, it, it, any discussion of what will happen post November is speculation. I, I, I want to be very clear mm -hmm. um, that I have a track record that qualifies me to be governor. I, I'd like to uh, exercise the opportunity if everything uh, aligns in, in an appropriate way. And I'm going to make that decision very uh, quickly after um, uh, the November election. Suffice it to say, you invited me to be on the show, and here I am. All right, good enough. Uh, you know, um Mr. Blumenthal is sort of viewed as sort of a sacred cow among Democrats, and a lot of people say they would defer to him if he decides he wants to run. If he should come to you and, you know, and says, Dan, I want to run for governor, will you not run? Would you abide by that? Dick and I have, have I, you, you need to understand this, we've been friends for many years, and, and it's not as if Dick and I haven't had discussions about politics uh, before. Uh, Dick has to decide what he's going to do. I'm certainly going to decide what I'm going to do. I can't imagine that anything would happen that would, would interrupt our, our friendship. So you know, I don't want to speculate yeah. beyond uh, that. He's a great guy, great attorney general. I, I'm always proud to introduce him. Uh, this is a guy who, who has seized issues, taken them, wrestled them to the ground, and made enemies by it. Uh, he certainly would be a great governor. Um, likewise, I think that I'm prepared to be governor of the state of Connecticut. If you're looking for somebody who's worked on the issues, uh, I certainly offer that. What would you do differently if you had to do 2006 over again? What did you learn from that loss? Well, you, you know, and you remember this race. I mean, I started and nobody knew who I was. Yeah. in the state of Connecticut. You know, coming from my portion of the state, you don't get a lot of coverage on, on Channel 3. You uh, constantly rose in the polls. I, I did. You know, I, I, you know I, I, I won that convention by one vote. Uh, I lost the, uh, the nomination uh, in a primary battle by 1% or so. And you have to remember, uh, I was on the line um, uh, that, uh, with a senatorial candidate who, who lost by uh, 9 percentage points, I think. So, you know, th things could have been going either way. What did I learn? I learned that the people of Connecticut want leadership. Um, uh, our economy is in very tough shape. Um, and, you know, the, the kind of movement in the economy that, that the, this governor and her predecessor took uh, credit for really was happening across the state, across the nation. Now that we see a slowdown in the nation, Connecticut's weaknesses are really uh, uh, exposed. Uh, the cost of energy, I'm not just talking about gas, which is astronomical and way above the national average, but electricity. Uh, and fuel oil uh, in, in the winter are really going to be very painful uh, for many people. And quite frankly, I haven't seen the, um, the, the governor talk in real terms about how she's going to help people uh, make it through the next winter. Uh, that's leadership. It takes leadership to, to wrestle these problems, and I'm prepared to do that. If you had to grade Governor Rell's performance since 2006, A to F, what would you give her? 
You know, that's a good question. Um, I, I think uh, if I was to grade public relations, I'd give her an A. Uh, if I would, uh, was to give her a, a grade for moving the state forward, I'd give her an F. What has she done wrong? Uh, we're not making progress in transportation. Um, uh, electric energy is much more expensive uh, than it was. We have fewer jobs. Um, our educational system is not being uh, improved. Uh, she has slighted uh, our metro economies across the state with respect to investment in, 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 the, in, in, in infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and education. So the, the reality is that Connecticut is more exposed today uh, than in any time in its history to lose jobs in mass numbers in the coming years. And there is no realistic discussion uh, in the legislature, led by the governor, uh, to how to make Connecticut a more competitive environment. And you've criticized the governor for her action or, or lack of action with the cities. What is she doing wrong when it comes to the cities of our state? Well, she doesn't visit them. I mean, I, you know, the reality is, is I, I'm the mayor of, of, of Stanford, um, and, and, and I'm there for 13 years and, and arguably running a pretty successful city. Uh, this is not a governor who has seen herself as a partner with mayors or city councils or state representatives across across the state in building the economy. I think there's a fundamental problem with this governor, and that is that she does not understand um, that this is not going to happen by itself. You're not going to grow jobs just because you talk about them. You're not going to improve urban education just because you talk about it. It takes real leadership. In some cases, it takes dollars. In some cases, it, it takes bringing in the right people uh, into the right jobs. And that's not what's happening in the state of Connecticut. How many conversations have you had with the governor in the last two years? I've, uh, we've said hello a few times. So you've never had a discussion about Stanford and how to move Stanford ahead and cities and... We honestly have, I, I, I like the governor as a person, so uh, we, we are always very nice to one another and have, and, and have, and, and exchange pleasantries. Uh, but no, no one from the governor's office uh, has ever called me and said, how can we help you do something? For instance, uh, we have a, um, an art institution, uh, which the state has cut the funding of uh, by $2 million over a couple of year period. It, it's in failure. Um, and it may have to close its doors. Having a profound impact on jobs, on restaurants, on other uh, venues in the downtown, you would think that someone would pick up the phone and say, how can I help a uh, mayor? And, and no, I have not had that call. In your opinion, was John Rowland a more effective governor? Wow, I'm a Democrat. What, what are you trying to do to me here? The, the, <laughs> well, you must have an opinion on who was the better of the what, two. What I, what I would honestly, and, and you deserve an, an honest answer to this question, I don't think either it was particularly effective when it came to growing the economy in Connecticut. And the number one issue for everybody in this state is what's happening to our jobs. Both of those governors, both, both of the governors who you've met, you have just mentioned, uh, have been governors in times when jobs are fleeing the state of Connecticut. We need a governor who's going to bring jobs, grow jobs, invest in jobs, change our uh, business environment, uh, build a transportation system that's going to address the problems, uh, support uh, urban education so we have qualified people mm -hmm. to work in the firms and in the jobs uh, that we want to have in the state, and then quite frankly also wrestle this energy issue. Let's